Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have 3 to the power x minus 3 to the power y equals 234, and x and y are integers. That's why it's called a Diophantine equation. All right, great. So there are so many ways you can solve Diophantine equations uh, with or in, uh, and I made a separate video on Diophantine equations. You can go ahead and check that out. So first of all, we have an exponential Diophantine equation, which is kind of like on the harder side. But this one is kind of like an easy problem because the bases are the same. So here's how I'm going to approach this problem. First of all, notice that 3 to the x minus 3 to the y is a positive difference, which means 3 to the x minus 3 to the y is greater than 0, right? 3, 234 is greater than 0. This implies that 3 to the x is greater than 3 to the y, and that implies x is greater than y. Make sense? Great. So the greater exponent gives us a greater result. Is it always true with 3? Yes, because it's an increasing function. Now, since x minus y... Since x is greater than y, this implies that x minus y is greater than 0. And since x minus y is greater than 0, I'm going to go ahead and set x minus y equal to something, t. Since x and y are integers, t is also a positive integer. From here, we can get x as y plus t. And that's actually what we are going to use in our equation. All right? Notice that the original problem has 3 to the x minus 3 to the y. Now I can go ahead and replace x with y plus t. So that's going to give me 3 to the y plus t minus 3 to the y. By the way, you don't have to do it this way, but that's just my method, right? My way or highway. And that is equal to 234. Now notice that you can clearly see x is greater than y because you're adding a positive number to y to get x. And now, at this point, it should hopefully be clear that I'm going to factor this. But first, I want to separate these two things into 3 to the y times 3 to the t minus 3 to the y times 1, right? And now, 3 to the y is a common factor. We can go ahead and pull that out. And then, inside, we're going to have 3 to the t minus 1. Now, why did I do all of this work, right? Obviously, I use substitution, I use inequalities, logic, whatever. So here's the critical part. Originally, you have a difference. And working with differences is harder, when, especially when it comes to exponentials. But working with a product is a lot easier. Look at this. We have a product now. So we kind of went from a difference to a product. That was the main motivation. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, here's what we're going to do next y and t are integers so 3 to the y and 3 to the t minus 1 are integers and their product is 234 what is that supposed to mean does that look like number theory obviously diophantine equations fall under number theory which means that we're going to be able to factor 234. let's go ahead and take a look at different ways 234 can be factored into for example we can write it as 1 times 234 or 2 times 117, if you know the first one, the second one is easier, and then 3 times 78, and then you can do, since 3 goes into 78, 4 doesn't go, because if you look at this, 117 is an odd number, you can tell, by the way, and uh, 4 doesn't go, 5 doesn't go, but 6 does, because if you look at 3 times 78, 78 is even, so I can break it down even more. You see what I'm saying? Try to understand how we can find factors easily because that's going to save you a lot of time. Another thing, which is very important, is that uh, 3 times 78. 78 is divisible by 3. It's 3 times 26. So we can also write this as 3 times 3 times 26, which means 9 is another factor. You see what I'm saying? 9 is another factor, and that's very important. You'll see in a little bit why 9 is important. And of course, there's another one, and you could probably tell from either 39 or 78, that 13 goes into this number. But how many times? Easy. You can write this as 6 times 3 times 13. Isolate the 13, you'll get 6 times 3, which is 18. So we can also write this number as 13 times 80. You see, I didn't do any division, I just used factors of numbers. Now, 
Take a look at this and take a look at the equation we have. Do you see any similarities? Okay, you should be able to compare them. Well, now what does that mean? It means that 3 to the y, first of all, is a power of 3. So one of the factors of this number is a power of 3. The other factor is 1 less than a power of 3. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at powers of 3 here, and let's kind of isolate them. Which one is a power of 3? 1 is a power of 3, 3 is a power of 3, 9 is a power of 3. Those are all the powers of 3, right? So I don't have to worry about these because definitely they can't be solutions. You see? By process of elimination. Make sense? And looking at the remaining, remaining ones, the other factor must be 1 less than a fa uh, power of 3. Is 234 1 less than a power of 3? In other words, if I add 1 to it, does it become a power of 3? And the answer is no. If I add 1 to 78, does it become a power of 3? Nope. The only one that's left, if I add 1 to 26, does it become a power of 3? And the answer is a big yes. Okay, a very loud yes. Why? That's the only choice left. So one of them has to work, right? Otherwise, there will be no solutions, right? Absolutely. So now we got the following. Let's kind of recap what we have. 3 to the y times 3 to the t minus 1 equals 9, and let's put a little dot here, a raised dot, times 26. Guess what? We now know that 3 to the y must be 9, and 3 to the t minus 1 must be 26. Awesome. From one equation to two equations. That's the power of number theory, especially the Diophantine equations. That's why Diophantine equations are awesome. That's why Diophantus is awesome. The father of all Diophantine equations, right? The inventor, whatever you want to call him. But he's a great guy. Is he Greek? Okay, anyways, that's another story. So 3 to the y equals 9, and from here you get y equals 2. Great. We are looking for x and y, we, and 3 to the t minus 1 is equal to 26. From here, 3 to the t is 27, which means t is equal to 3. Wait a minute. I wasn't looking for t, but don't worry. I was looking for coffee, right? Well, not really. I was looking for x and y. But x is what? y plus t. Awesome. So since t is equal to 3, x is equal to 2 plus 3, which is 5. So x is 5, y is 2. You didn't see that, right? x is 5, y is 2, so that's it, right? That's the end of the story? Not really, because we're going to look at it from another perspective. Ready? Okay, let's go. go ahead and take a look. Now, we have 3 to the x minus 3 to the y equals 234. Okay? Now, take a look at powers of 3. I'm going to make a table. A table is going to be like a and 3 to the a. I don't want to use x or y. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to be powering these, right? 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, 243, 729, so on and so 2187. You can continue, right? You don't need to go that far. Look at the difference. The difference of two powers of 3 is in the hundreds. So uh, is there a way to get a hundred, a hundred something from it, like a three-digit number, 200 something? Well, this kind of got my attention, right? So what should I subtract from 243 to get 234? The answer is very easy, 9. And that's the only way this is going to work. That's very unique, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.